For every hunter, there is a beast. Nakai is that beast. Nakai the Wanderer is the oldest living Croxagore in existence left, and he was part of the first spawning. This means he's witnessed the rise and fall of temple cities, chaos entering the world, and the intrusion of the foul Skaven menace. During the great catastrophe that war against chaos at the very beginning of the world, Lanchla was destroyed, and he was the only survivor from that tragic casualty. He began to wander and never settled down in a temple city again. Instead, he went to where enemies of the Lizardmen arose. During that same war, he defended the Golden City of Itza and killed so many demons that even those spawns feared him. He spilled so much of their blood that they actively avoided the area they fought him at. Years later, when Clan Pestilence came to Lustria, he killed thousands of their ilk and survived fighting a plague-filled rat ogre. For his thousands of years of service, he is an icon of power to the skinks who make up the Lizardmen civilization, and they shower him in gold wherever he appears. Word has spread of a new intruder in Lustria, a hunter, and now Nakai will end his hunt. The jungle continent of Lustria lies west across the great ocean. The first men to land upon these shores ransacked an ancient temple, filling their ships with golden treasures. Word spread of their wealth, and others were eager to follow. Fueled by greed, men of the Empire ventured deeper into the jungle's heart. The land of beasts ravaged and plundered for its riches. It will not be without consequence. The jungle stirs. A cold-blooded fury rising to punish the invaders. In the temple cities of Lustria, the Lizardmen enact a ritual to call upon their mighty guardian. For the Wanderer roams Lustria once more. The spirit of the jungle made manifest. A reckoning has come. Only the strongest will survive the coming bloodshed. Now it's time for Nikai to save Lustria. He likes to wander around, but now he's got intent. Now he's got to focus a warpath for him to follow. We've got four heroes to kill. If we do so, well, the Hunt Marshal will have less to help him in future battles. Jorik Grimm, that master engineer, is way down here. Hertwig Van Hal, the witch hunter, to the east. And to the north, we have Roderick and Kalara. For now, though, We've got to expand, we've got to kill quickly. Our goal is to try to get a Dread Saurian again very quickly. Okay, hi, Sarah Tippin, come join my main army. 
We've got two groups of Croxagores, one being the Earthshaker Cohort, or they're actually called the Sacred Croxagores. And of course, we have a standard group too. They're very expensive, but hopefully we can get more Sacreds in time. Now, let's go to the Monument of Izatal, where maybe we can find some Skaven. We did. Normally, I wouldn't fight these battles out, but let's find out how tough our Croxagores really are. We've got to get into the Salty Spittoon, you see. Nakai the Wanderer is now leading his Croxagor brethren into battle. They will be outnumbered in many fights to come, but their insurmountable strength alone should be able to stop any Skaven advance. It's a small garrison, but it's a harbinger of things to come. The violence we'll be dealing with will be without measure, and again, we will always be outnumbered. They have Night Runners, and Night Runners can be decent, but they're nothing in comparison to what I'm bringing to them. Javelins are now hitting them. These Night Runners have a range of only 70. My cohort has a range of 80. Just enough to do some damage, but they do have more missiles than we do. Now these Javelins are piercing a few rats. But more importantly, here comes all of our Kronksigors. Demolishing everything about their units. It only took one charge. I mean, look at what's happening with my sacred Kroxagors. They're all Golden Glove boxers. Ravaging and destroying every scape in here. While that fight is going on, we have more units. Those who are flanking and keeping more of their units busy on the right flank behind a old, aged, decrepit structure. But Nakai, again, is using whatever enhancements he has in order to buff up these units allowing him to easily damage any Skaven still here. He's rather blasé about fighting. He's like, yeah, you know what, shrug. I might as well kill a few while I'm here. Maybe I'll take a nap later. Get a snack too, well, we're gonna snack here. By keeping all of them busy, by making sure that not too many can run away, we have a resounding victory that's already within reach. My warriors have such an immense level of strength, Skaven cannot compare, they need other tools to win. That's why you'll be watching me rush my enemies early on, I'm using my early game advantage to overwhelm any Skaven opposition. Here comes another charge. With a large creature like a Kroxagorb, even Nakai stands a foot taller than that. It was a quick fight, but Nakai has done it, the battle is over. There wasn't too much tactically to go over, you saw everything that happened. And now we get to leave. You can now see how powerful my sacred Kronksagores are. They can deal a lot of damage. We gained a banner, providing 15% more speed. You know what? I'll give it to my sacred Kronksagores. If they can move faster, they can catch up with another faster unit, potentially. Okay. For now, we shall focus on Quetzal, the warrior god. We've got Sholanka, a nearly forgotten god, and over here, Itzel, the god of all beast-like creatures in Lustria. Skaven revealed Clan Mange. Well, we're gonna kill them. One mission completed. Well, thank you. What is your name? You kinda do that. Aha, I get it. Very funny. Yeah, let's take him to the sacrificial pit. Anyway. Nakai, your strength is needed all across Lustria. You cannot become attached to any one location. Leave this region in the care of the defenders of the Great Plan, who will protect it in their stead. Considering he's a Croxagor, I would like to think that there's like a long dollop of like drool coming from his maw, and he just kind of walks off and goes to kill. That's probably closer to truth, though, according to lore. Okay, Nakai. At rank 2, we'll put a point into Route Marcher. At rank 10, we can begin to get into the nitty-gritty of Nakai. Now later, I will pick up Obedience Brings Victory. It makes my leadership aura size 50% bigger. I'll get plus 5 to my leadership aura effect. And if I pick up Inspiring Presence, another plus 5, giving me a total of plus 10. Now, that is a lot. My units will never break at that point. Anyway, back over here to Route Marcher. I cannot wait to kill every hero, and I will do that. We do have Old One's Favor, we gain it each turn, and we gain it whenever we conquer new locations, we complete missions, all of that. We can spend it on rights, we can spend it on technology, and even units too. 
So my goal is to get that tier one upgrade, Quetzal's Grace, providing plus six to melee defense for all of my melee units, but my Croxigors. And I can get a Scar Veteran at rank four, not rank one, but rank four. It's pretty darn good and very cheap, only 100 favor points. Later, I might work on Itzel. I could work on Sholanka for magic, but I'm not going to do that, not right now. And for technology, there's some very good technology out there. Look over here, 5% casualty replenishment, 5% missile resistance for all Croxagores and sacred Croxagore units. Ancient Fortitude makes you immune to chaos attrition. And there's more things like that. For now, let's work on Horde Growth and also Replenishment. So we'll move all the way over here. It'll take me about 21 turns unless I can reduce the overall time, but it'll be worthwhile. Now, while we work on our growth, Let's look at what we can build. If I upgrade my capital now, that would allow me to get plus two to my growth and I would be able to recruit one more unit. Not bad, not a bad idea at all. While we're here, why don't we pick up a few more Saurus units? We'll take two more warriors. Next, we should conquer a nearby location belonging to the Skaven. Well, I do not know where they're all at, that's true. Let's conquer to the west, then we can move down and conquer to the east. And wherever they pop up, if they retake one of my locations belonging to my vassals, so be it. They have a pretty big garrison. We're looking at temple guards, even an ancient stegodon. Hey, that should do it. I don't know how Nakai fits in that giant pyramid. He's bigger than it. Anyway, let's end our turn now. We now have a restored ziggurat. We're making it better already. Now that Nakai is taking control, the Predator's Sacred Pyramid has been returned to a functional state. That is true. Now to move. Oh, that will take me way too long. What would be? What would be closer to me? The cavern would be. Does it all belong to the same province? It does. I suppose we could follow that pathway and then react by moving where we need to. I'm very glad that now what we can do, we can move as far as we want and then form our encampment. We can move a lot further than having to move like halfway and, and then stop, but that would take way too long. When it comes to diplomacy, there are factions who like me, like Laxlin. Join Confederation, hey, not a bad idea. Now, will you pay me for that? I'm wondering, you don't have a lot of money, but you will pay me 300. I won't take too much from you. Sure, I can help you out. I don't want to fight you. Itza, Gorrock. Me and you could be buddy-buddy, kind of. I mean, you're kind of my competition. I kill, you kill, but I kill more. Oh, the Hunt Marshal. Strength one, really? Oh, he's very powerful then. I'll have to be careful. So we'll begin to expand down here and build up our power until I can bring a Dread Saurian. Try to hunt that one, Marcus. A new mission, research a technology. Skink researcher is ready. I like to think it's just a bunch of lizards with magnifying glasses and... I don't know, little robes. Skink researchers and archivists are poised to do your bidding, ancient master. Select a field of knowledge you require and they shall begin. Yeah, I've been doing that. Three more turns to go. Well, master engineer, I'm on my way. I've got to kill a few Skaven. There's a few thousand Skaven between me and you, but I'm on my way. I do not need to fight that one. It's way too tiny and I'm way too powerful. Here you go, Earth Shakers. Enjoy your Earth Breakers. We lost only 73, we'll give it to Quetzal. We have found out Clan Mange. There are so many Skaven clans around me. We've unlocked a new rite, Rites of Allegiance. The Kai's constancy, shored up by the appropriate liturgy, of course, draws his replying kin to the Wanderer's War Banner. Okay, I can't use it yet. I need 300 favor. See, we've got two for gold and two for favor. 300 and 500 is what it would cost me. Rites of Rebirth is what we want. It'll provide an army to our vassal. Right now, they have no army, only garrisons, which is why other factions will probably declare war on them all the time. Okay, now that we've conquered two locations, we're getting more money from them. 200. Now, at rank 3, we'll put a point into Inspiring Presence. Again, my goal is to try to make sure that any unit nearby will stay with me. And we'll put a point into Harmonic Convergence, because I use that ability quite a bit. It's great for whenever there's another tough foe to fight. All right, we'll form our encampment. And actually, can I move any further? I can. Why don't we complete our entire province? It's really not taking me long. And I wonder, do you have a lot of friends? 
Maybe you do, but we're getting very close to finding Jorik Grimm. Oh yeah, we'll get him. Another mission issued. Whenever I complete all of these here, I'll have so much more gold. Okay, natural expansion. That's pretty lewd. I don't know if I can say that out loud. Ensure that one of the following buildings have been constructed. The reactivated ziggurats. As our influence grows, so do our followers. To maintain such a vast horde, we must upgrade our camps. Sure thing, buddy. Oh, you've got a bigger army. Okay. Well, if I fight you, that's going to be a very busy battle. Okay, I can't reach you, but you can reach me. Now, this should be a good fight. Let's take a few more warriors. Well, actually, spears, because they do have rat ogres. Now, who's going to be stronger, my swole lizards or his little rinky-dink rat ogres? Probably mine. All right, let's end our turn now and fight a pretty big force. Nakai the Wanderer is being ambushed, but he doesn't worry about that. He's a creature of pure instinctual rage. The Skaven will have a lot more ranged units than I can afford to bring to the battlefield. So I'll make do with what I have. A lot of warriors. All of my Saurus units are now moving into the trees. Whenever possible, I'll fight in the trees to reduce any advantage they have with their ranged units. Nakai is advancing on his own. He's a limber croc. Here they come now. That's how you know he's in a good mood. In a really good mood. Rad ogres are dive bombing in, but truly, they are not the wrestling champions here. He's only taking a croc now. We're about to witness a charge. Here they come. Croxagores fighting my rad ogres. I'm kidding. I don't own them. If I did, I would get rid of them because they're garbage in comparison to my Croxicores. You can see that the battle is happening at various points in the jungle. Here's where we fight. And you'll notice that whenever I'm outnumbered by Skaven, I'll fight them in the trees. Again, I'm trying to reduce any type of artillery damage or ranged damage by me. Here's my cohort throwing in javelins, destroying many Skaven in the process. They're not going to get very far now. For an overview of the battle, it's all happening in the trees right now. So now we just need to push all of them back. There's more who are coming, but we don't need to look at that right now. They're very far away. Nakai is continuing to fight. And he's crashing right through all of the Skaven who remain. Already, we've killed a lot of them. Many of them are breaking. These rat ogres are fragile. They really are nothing in comparison to my Kroxigors. Maybe if they had proper support, they could do something, but they lack it. That's why Nakai is able to kill so many. He's punching and clombering his way through more of them. Much like that, one punch and dozens fall. Here comes more Skaven now, but my sacred Kronksagors, the Earthbreakers, they're coming now to counter them. And a boxing they go. Then there's my standard Kronksagors also hitting them. Together as a team, it's really a potent combination. No matter what comes at them, they end up striking them down. I'm sure eventually there will be a challenge, but because I am a horde faction, I've got to utilize whatever advantage I can early on. Ah, magic. Magic that bounced right back. I would like to think they bowed up and through their muscles, they were able to repel that spell to hit their own units. How brilliant Skaven are. Rat ogres are coming back. Many more rats are fleeing. We've already killed hundreds of them, but there are thousands more to fight. Let's have a look at where they're coming from. It'll be very far from where we're at right now, but we're going to have a massive amount of Skaven who will be heading towards us. It won't be easy, but it will be enjoyable. There's Nakai now attacking one of their leaders. Like I told you, they're part of a crocodilian... Wrestling Federation. There's usually no survivors, so the Federation didn't really exist for too long. The challengers would die quickly. And so right now, we just need to counter any Skaven who remain here. Then, when the time comes, we'll counter more of them. There's a few out there. Here comes another group. Is it a broken group? Oh, it is a broken group. 
Look at them coming back. They're in trouble. Okay. Here comes the main army. What we thought was only a vanguard force. There are thousands coming now. They feel bravery in numbers. They feel as though it might be a strength for them. Normally, they would be correct. But they're fighting Nakai, the wandering spirits. Look at how many Skaven we're about to fight. It's only our second battle. We went from, what, over a thousand Skaven to over four thousand Skaven. They're traveling. They're taking their time. The great multitude is coming. You can see all of our units in the distance getting ready to counter them. To fight them quickly. Do you have leaves on your backs? Or are those cloaks? <laughs> it's pretty funny. Nikai is on his own skipping around. Travel la la la, he goes. <laughs> Could you imagine though? No emotion at all, but he does sing a song whenever he's skipping along. And the killing he goes again. Here comes another one of their ilk. Oh, they're throwing a few pebbles at him. That's pretty rude. Now you've gone and angered him. Why would you do that? Our units will be coming out soon. They're still waiting over there in the trees. Here comes the big army, though. It's going to be quite the fight. I love the way that Nakai moves. It's pretty goofy. I do say that, but imagine you're down a hallway and you have that barreling towards you. Never mind, it's really not that silly anymore. I was only kidding. All of our units are currently in the jungle, getting ready. All lined up. Then, when they're closer, we'll charge out and fight everyone that we can together. My Kronxagors are a cornerstone of my army's composition. There's a few of them who are still trying to attack me. They're not getting very many kills. They're right over here. Again, the trees are blocking a lot of those ranged shots. Now it's time for the big battle. You can see how many are hitting the trees and not landing on my units. There goes Nakai fighting alone for the time being. Now that is a power punch. I like how he's got a giant club, but it's like, you know what? You're not worth it. I'll power punch you. And that's truly a lot of mobility, but here they come. Thousands of Skaven moving into the trees where they're going to meet their horned rat, their maker. Here comes all of our, I almost said Skaven, all of our lizard men. Now coming down from the trees. They got a moment to rest up too. If they were fatigued, hopefully now they're no longer fatigued. There's only a few of them here. The rest of them are elsewhere, coming at us. If we can get some wind blasts going, oh man, the damage would be incredible. So many of them would either die or just be damaged. And if they're damaged, other units can kill them. You can see where my poor spears are fighting largely alone. They'll need to be supported later if they are to survive this battle. Eitzel's spears will not fall today. Nakai just wades right through their multitudes. To see all of our Croxagors, they're elsewhere, taking down a much smaller foe. You can see how many they're breaking. Now, all of these units are free to help us flank more. So now they're going to get into formation and quickly charge into what's left of the Skaven host. When I say what's left, it's like a really large pie. You ate a lot of pie, you're feeling full, but there's still more. That one devastating attack knocked back dozens of Skaven. It's time for a rampage. It's time to deal more damage. There comes our Croxagors now helping out. If we zoom out, we can see what's left of the battle. There's one battle happening over here where my warriors are outnumbered. Elsewhere, we're beginning to fall on a large blob of Skaven. There's only so much they can do. That's when you know it's very early on in the campaign. It's when the Skaven do not have other tools like cannons. 
or Giselles. All of those could counter what I am bringing. But that's why we're pushing. That's why we're going to kill as many as we can. That way we have a safe little spot we can rest in if we want to reformat our army and get other units. It won't take long for these Kronxagors to become veterans. It really will not take long at all. These spears, Ital spears, took so much damage they needed to be restored a bit. So we gave them more leadership. And they were being buffed up by our seer, Tippin, a great spellcaster. A storied one, too, if you've seen a few other campaigns from the past. I love whenever they bring up giant boulders and they punch it at the Skaven, too. We're going to witness us fight so many different types of foes, but it looks like now many of them are breaking. We've wounded and killed so many. They couldn't beat us. I mean, even though they outnumber us, Imagine if you're not trying to surround an enemy army with your numbers, even if they did though, we're too strong. I've made sure to buff up anything that I have. And it's all melee. Amusingly enough, having a balanced army would not have benefited me here. Not as much. Most of them are beginning to run. Now we get to give chase. The damn rats are still around. A few of them are not even broken like the Slingers or the Night Runners. It's easy to make out where our sacred Croxagors are at. They're majestic. One of my favorite units added to the Lizardmen. When I first saw them, I was like, are you kidding me? They look silly. Then I watched them wade into combat where they punched stones. And I was in love. I said, you know what? You're going to be my new friend. And they're breaking everyone. We're still not done yet. But there were over 4,000 Skaven here. There's no longer 4,000 Skaven here. Nakai's moving. And when he's moving, someone's dying. You can see him easily move into the fight. If we look at it. There's still a lot left. I mean, even though I've killed so many, they've got all these fresh or relatively fresh groups moving back in. It takes a lot for my hordes. I'm kidding. I don't have a horde. It takes a lot for my elite group to reach them. But because of all of the Source Warrior support, and because they don't really have any synergy in their army, my Croxagors just get to wade in without taking too much damage. We're also using Nakai's ability, which provides a large amount of physical resistance. It does cause units to rampage, but they also get a lot of melee attack as well, so they're landing more hits in combat, thereby killing more enemies. There's an enemy spell canister right here. Now they've all broken, so we've won the battle. We just need to give chase. But the battle is now officially over. We've done it. There wasn't any time to waste at all. Nakai brought his army over to Hualadol. Skaven control an ancient city, and they cannot be allowed to remain here. So right after dealing with that ambush, they came over here to Hualadol. Now, our Croxagors will charge the main gate, taking whatever damage they're willing to sustain, which is a lot. Our other units will charge the walls. Because of that, superior melee strength that we have whenever there's an early game siege battle we will charge the walls with every single unit instead of trying to you know break down towers we're going to ignore them and move right in now nakai goes to the gate he's here to knock he's here to say hello inside there are skaven that are still alive i don't know why they're here they should probably leave if nakai comes a knocking he might want to go Look at them. They're like, hey, you know what? What if we relocate it for now? It's a haunted old location, but it's one that can be rebuilt and reordered for the great plan. Each tower will be cleansed, each location purified. You can see such ancient statues here. I wonder what... Oh, look at that. A statue of a human king. Could it be Sigmar? What a strange location to have a statue like that in. But now, we've got lizard men 
who are popping up onto the walls. Sorry's warriors are going to be able to handle those fights quite well. And while we wait, the front gate is now opened. We'll let ourselves in. Thank you. There goes Nakai. Saying hello. The main focus of our fight will be down here for the time being, using his AoE to provide physical resistance and melee attack. It's quite efficient. It's a great use of our time, too. Sure, I could use it on my entire army, or I can do it here. There we go. One of Tippin's wind blasts, killing dozens of Skaven, and those who remain are weakened so that other units can more easily slay them. There's another punch. And another taken down. They're trying to damage us. Now what I really enjoy is that the spellcaster here attempted to hit my units. It hit the wall and bounced back, killing his own Skaven. So I didn't do all the damage on my own. Tippin didn't do it all alone. He was helping me. I would like to think it was a traitor. That's personally what I think. Now on the walls, more warriors are fighting. They're going to easily defeat any Skaven here. Again, they lack the tools to stop me. If they had a bunch of Blade Claw catapults, then I would lose a lot. You can see down here where the Croxagores are having a very easy time fighting this group. There's not too many of them to worry about. There's another spell from Tippin, killing even more. And another from that Plague Priest. That's a lot dead. Did you see that Croxagor rolling around? I haven't seen that in a while. <laughs> Good boy, maybe? I don't know. Most of the Skaven down here are terrified. They're fleeing now. Through all that spell casting, they were broken easily and quickly. And on the walls, there's only a few left. Not that it really matters. Tippin is outside casting spells. Without having to look. Oh, that's pretty talented. We've taken the walls. Kualano will soon belong to the Lizardmen. To the defenders of the Great Plan. Those few Skaven who were left behind are being punched out. Lights out. Oh my wa mo shindru. This is what they say each time in their language. So now there's a group here. We're trying to get into formation. But they're pelting us with a few stones, and that's pretty rude. Time for a few elbow drops, and for Nakai skipping. Look at how many Skaven are left back there. It's a lot. While our group fights here, there's another. Another that we need to worry about. I have got some Soros warriors who are attempting to flank around them by moving onto the wall. They can move down here and then follow a path right behind this group of Skaven who are currently fighting my warriors. And I'm sure Tippin will be of great help there too. Tippin is moving in, so are our javelins. There's more spellcasting to utilize. The Kai is fighting on his own. A pounding and a crushing. Eventually, We'll get a Blessed Stegadon. With a Blessed Stegadon, we're going to be unstoppable for a period of time. Amusingly enough, too, to let you know, the Hunt Marshal is the number one power in terms of strength rating. Another group of Skaven have been wiped out by Tippin. And if we look down here, they're still fighting a slow battle. It shows you how much my Croxagores make a difference. If I had standard warriors, look at how long any battle would take. They're not really moving very much. They're killing, sure, but they're not really moving that much. It's only because of my new Croxagores and because of Nakai that we're able to kill everyone who's coming towards us. Now Tippin is moving up. Just hopping through. Hello. Nakai is still leading. Always first in the battle. Last to leave, too. For the rest of our units, well, they're attempting to get around. It takes them a little bit. Sometimes the pathfinding can be finicky. The great plan is being carried out. My great plan is just to kill a lot of Skaven. So the plan over here was to make that spell, Windblast, bounce against the wall, thereby 
shooting back into the ranks after first going through them, killing even more Skaven than before. Tippin's pretty good at uh, cool. That's why it's called Tippin. All lewd jokes aside. And Tippin cheers him on. Get him. Get him, he says, probably. And while that's happening, our main host charges in. Stones are coming flying down towards us. They have a leader still who's alive. My Croxagors are fighting. Here, they'll take a lot more damage, and I'm sure of that. They've been fighting for quite some time. Ah, they're being blessed with the filth to debuff us, to damage us more. There's Nakai. They're waiting right through, using their weight just to push them back. Get out of his way. Another group gone. That one went flying too. He's so mobile. That one goofy move changes up everything. And over here, my sorry spearmen are finally flanking a few of the Skaven who remain. But we've won the battle. Kuo Lodal has been saved. There's only a few left. There's even rat ogres too. If you're curious about the numbers real quick here, let me show you. You can see that we've taken some damage, quite a bit of damage, if I might add. Not that it really matters too much. I don't believe it does. The rat ogres are taking it. We've got so many lizard men over here who are just getting pumped. They're feeling pretty good. It's what Arnold calls the pump. So it's just a grind to see how long it takes to kill all of these Skaven. Tippin is coming back. There's a buff helping out some of our units while they're finding out here. And a wind blast. He's got a lot of magic. Sri Lanka is certainly a valid tree to go down if you just want to have more magic and to focus on that. I really do enjoy the dedication of the gods. It would be interesting to have some type of mechanic like that. At least the buffs are really good. But it looks like they're mostly breaking now. There's just a few rat ogres who are... I'm so shocked they're staying for this long. I did not anticipate that at all. But now it's over. We did it. We fought two battles back to back and we were able to take their settlement. Using Windblast for our great seer Tippin was a good call. He was able to kill hundreds on his own. And those who were not killed were maimed. We didn't lose too many in that fight. We'll give it to Quetzal. Right now, the Skaven only have numbers. They do not have their usual magic or technology that allows them to beat me. I begin with very elite units. If I didn't have my Kroxagors or Nakai, I would be in trouble. Rat spawn sacrifice plus four to leadership when fighting them. The ancient enemy, virulent and plague ridden, makes the best sacrifices. Very true. We've gained a new trait called Looter, giving me more money when I conquer locations. Very good. And over here, a mission completed because Clan Mange is now gone. 1,000 more gold for me. All right, Uolotl, you have been redeemed. Now we can move down here, or we can go after another Skaven location. It really depends on where I would like to go. That would limit the dwarves. I like that idea. I don't know what's waiting for me, so why don't we come over here, beat them at Chikubal, and then we can go over here to the west, to the Chamber of Visions. Okay, at rank 5, let's put a point into something important. I could make my Kronxagors even more powerful. That's true. I could make my frontline infantry more powerful, but I think I want to make Nakai more powerful. So instead, what we'll do, we'll put a point into Predatory Fighter. Of course, those who live to kill must also kill to live, plus 5 to our charge bonus and plus 5% to weapon strength. He's powerful, but we can always make him more powerful. Okay, now that we're here, I could recruit more infantry. 
a lot more infantry. If I do that, we'll have an easier time fighting. I'll lose some money, but that's okay. Let's do it anyway. Because I'm about to conquer another location right over here. Now, I could upgrade our building that we have now, but I'm going to wait. I don't need new storage units. I need other units. Maybe even things to make things cheaper, like my old one monument. We are only on turn five, so if I pick that up in two turns, I'll save 5% of my income. My casualty replenishment will go up too, which is a major theme, a major part of my goals right now. That way, after any battle, I can quickly get into another battle. My goal is to take advantage of my early game strength in order to overwhelm my enemies. We're very strong, so we might as well monopolize that feat that we have and defeat everyone close by. Another mission completed, giving me 1,000 more gold. There's some technology completed. I'm losing 581 per turn. I can always abandon one or two units or even combine what I have that's currently injured. They want me to search any ruined settlement for treasure. Nakai, powerful relics have been lost to time, but they remain of paramount importance. We must seek them out if we are to ever complete the Great Plan. Yeah, maybe. I feel like that's a way you get me to do what you want. Great Plan that. Take out the trash, Nakai. Whatever. All right, plus two to my growth. Now we're working on sequence of healing, giving me plus 2% to my casualty replenishment rate. All right, who do I need to heal up completely? There we are. There's no one. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Check your bowl. I'm here. Oh, there's no one really here. Well, we need to search the ruins for that one quest. Cypher of the old ones. Okay, now we're going to do this one over here. So it can't be one or two. It's got to be three. Are we going to need a red three? All right, we did it. That gave me a very powerful obsidian blade. And 1,000 gold. All right. A blade made of darkest obsidian with an edge that is said to not exist in this mortal plane. No armor can stand against it. No, it's really powerful. I'll give it to one of my Scar veterans later. For now, we own it. Here you go. Look at that damage increase. Okay. Now we can break through more enemy armor. Now I can give it over to Quetzal again. Enjoy. Another temple built. So we get to wait here for a minute. The dwarfs are limited. All races here outside of the Lizardmen will be limited in Lustria. I will see to it. But now we've got to move on. It'll take me a turn or two to make it over there. What buildings do I want? I want none of your buildings right now. I'm waiting to grow again. Give me a turn and we'll be okay. And I'm making more money now. Hooray. 400 Vassal Tribute. Eh, could be more. Mission issued. Okay, what do you want? A non-aggression pact. Oh, the dwarfs did attack our vassal, meaning that we'll need to kill them too. They do own two locations. I could make it my priority to move down there first and later go after the Chamber of Visions. You know what? How dare you? How dare you strike my people? I'm on my way right now. The Caverns of the Great Bat. That's pretty spooky. I don't want to go there. Don't make me go there. Okay, skinks are very cheap, but I don't need them yet. What I could use is a lot more gold and replenishments. So we'll take that old one monument. We're putting it in my pyramid. Maybe in my crocodile bedroom. It's a giant, like, pond that we locate inside of the ziggurat. Okay, I only own four locations, or you own four locations. I do not. I own nothing. I'm a wandering croco hobo. Yeah, eat so we're friendly. Sure. Okay, you don't want to ally. Well, that's okay. I forgive you. I'm currently ranked 10. I'm very powerful. I mean, look at my army. That's a lot of tough stuff here. I've got a weapon strength of 52. That's hard to beat early on. Okay, let's get ready for a battle to fight some dwarfs. Some jungle dwarfs. Holy Toledo, we're still here. No one came to attack me. Good. Now, I'm not going to fight that battle while it's way too tiny for me. I've seen better. All right, gift for Quetzal again, giving me more gold, and I'm now earning more gold from my vassal. Plus four to leadership, thanks to my standard of discipline. I'll give it to someone, I don't know who yet. All right, so now that we've done that, how long would it take for me? Oh, a very long time. That's why playing a jungle dwarf would be amazing. They've got a great location to fight from. All right, let's head over here now. Well, before I go there, I don't want to intrude on their lands. I'm trying to be polite if I can help it. I'm sure they'll attack any one of my locations eventually, but I've got to move on. I can always retake it later. Okay, Tippin. Let's put another point into Windblast. 
Yeah, I could use your spell to stop all of their archers. And while we're here, we can form our encampment or we can just combine. And not really have to worry about it too much. Oh, hello. The Court of Liberas. We'll go visit them later as well. But we're still heading straight for that master engineer, Jorik Grimm. We'll get 250 favor. Speaking of favor, we need to go over here and spend a bit of my own. I've already got my Quetzal's Grace. We're pretty close to getting my Quetzal's approval. The god's like, hmm, you're not so bad. It'll give me plus four to my melee attack for my melee units. But for now, I would like to pick Scar Veterans of Distinction, giving me a rank four Scar Veteran. Now that I do like. Okay. Let's have a look over here. We've got a pretty good army. Now I want my hero. Oh, look at that. You're actually a higher level than I thought you would be. Immune to psychology is really good, but let's take discipline. Another plus two to leadership and plus two to melee attack. Sure, it's not much, but man, I've got so much, it all adds up. Okay, you want me to carry out a hero action. Whenever he joins my army, he'll complete one. Let's pick up Predatory Fighter. We'll get Enforcer of Porter. Then we'll get Blade Master. I want him to hit everyone in combat. All right, do I have any? No, I don't really have too much for you, do I? No, I do not. That is okay. You will join me in a turn. Let's get a move on to the Chamber of Visions over to the west. We've got a two for one special. Wolfgang von Wolfen. Oh, come on. You're a bit redundant. Is coming in with our master engineer friend. They're coming to fight me now. They've brought in a great cannon, many veterans, and even a war wagon. Okay. We'll have to find them in the jungle, I think, if we want to win without too many casualties. They do have a lot of ranged units and leaders, too. Handgunners can easily break down any of my more powerful units. Standard of discipline. I'm going to give you two. Why not? My other Kroxigors. They never need to break. Imperials moving into position. You can see where they're lying in wait. Pretty soon they'll move out. It's a pretty early morning here. And they're all getting ready to fight our faction. Handgunners, spearmen, swordsmen, a group of war wagons. The Master Engineer. We'll put up a stand. I don't see him winning. Not today. Those are some pretty intelligent horses. No one to really guide them. <laughs> they're like, look, we know where to go. Don't you mind us. Now they're moving into position. While my army is beginning to move into the trees. Again, I always use the trees. Terrain is very important for my type of army. Especially in Lustria. I'm the lizard man. I've got to utilize what we're from and where we're from. I've got more units than before. In each battle, I just gain more and more warriors. We can see where I'm at. And so we wait here for the time being, but eventually our army will divulge. One to the left, one to the right. We'll fight in two different areas. We can see how many units they have. Two groups coming to fight. Here comes the war wagon. Not really a great location for them to be in. Eventually, I would love for my javelins to hit them and to maybe bring them down. They're mobile. They can do damage over time. I'm not too worried about them. They're not a high priority target, but they can certainly be annoying if they're assisted by a very large army. Here comes more Imperials, many handgunners. Men who are willing to give their lives for a false cause. Keep in mind, they're the interlopers here, not us. We're just here to preserve our lands. We didn't go over to the Empire. They came here to bother every single one of us. And it won't be permitted. So now here comes our Saurus Warriors. I usually send in my shields first. There's a Huntsman. I believe his shot may have hit that tree. So that went awry for him. Now we're charging into these human ranks. A different fight than fighting Skaven. We have fought a lot of Skaven. There's Nakai. The war wagons are moving. Nakai went straight into the middle of it. Already getting a hard swing into them. Outside on the plains, we've got some units that are going to be moving in to stop them. As they will try to encircle us. Here comes their swordsmen. No great swords here. There goes my warriors. 
Outside of Skinks, you've got a pretty automaton-based army when it comes to the lizard men. Like Froxagores, they're manual laborers, and outside of Nakai, they do not have much intelligence or a capability to speak. They might know a few words here and there. Soros Warriors have a little bit more. And you've got leaders, but they're just built for combat. Skinks are the ones who've got all the personality. They're pretty funny. I can picture one being overly greedy. <laughs> Now my Croxagores are out on the plains fighting, bashing a few of the boys here. They came for some good old sandwiches and kebabs. They're leaving with a few bruises. Sorry buddy, we're all out. I've got a knuckle sandwich for you. So now they're running and quick. Evidently they are Imperial Sprinters. No one told me that. So let's have a look at where my other units are now. They're right by that building over to the right. You can see where they're holding. They're not being supported by all of my units. Again, the fight's going slowly. It will not be shifting quickly at all. We've got a few warriors who circumvented around on the right. Now they're chasing a few ranged units. There's their huntsman general. Attempting to do some serious damage. Hitting my Soros warriors from behind. Slaying at least a couple. They have more ranged units out here who are lying in wait. Crossbowmen, handgunners, the whole lot. It's hard to miss Nakai, and there he is. Hello there, dwarf. No, you won't be helping. Hunts Marshal, Marcus Wolfhard. No, you won't be. He's the one we're here to kill. We'll negate every single leader that they have in order to aid us in the final battle whenever we show down with Marcus Wolfhart. There's the war wagons moving away. I think the javelins got him a little bit. There's two wagons left behind. Unfortunately, my skink cohorts are being shot up. You see how many were knocked down, but not too many were killed. There's more of them leaving the jungle now. It looks like a lot of the battle has already been won as we're now just encircling those who remain. And there's only a few who remain. They had an Arch Lector here too, if I remember correctly. Yeah, right over here, right? A holy man. Not that holy. Nice little cute hammers there, buddy. You need two. Makai says, look, I'm going to skip over here, but then we can play again, all right? He wasn't too bad. So now we zoom out and we can watch where the battle is still occurring. This group of Soros Spears are now moving in, flanking this pocket of soldiers left. They've been cut off from their comrades. Now they die alone, lonely in the jungle. Far, far away from their loved ones. They brought up a great cannon. I have no idea why. It wasn't put to great use at all. It'll be melted down and used to make a porta potty. A very nice porta potty. And that's where we're going to put all the humans we killed, because they're shit. And so further down, our Croxagores have been advancing on various ranged units. Bye-bye now. That'll be the first of two battles. There's another one coming. We've broken them, and we've beaten them. Now it's time to move on. A clear victory for us. I wonder if I needed to kill him or not. Anyway, let's take up our replenishment. We've gained a new item, a gleaming banner or pennant. Okay. It provides more leadership. Well, here you go, buddy. My poor spears have been in the thick of it in like every battle. Goodbye, Jork Grim. Do I didn't need to kill him though? I guess we're gonna find out. I shouldn't be so impatient. That was a lot of Imperials, but again, we've got so much overwhelming strength. You can have a largely ranged army, but if you don't have the infantry to stop me in my tracks, I mean, what can you do? You really can't do much. All right, so we're not done here yet. And they get to replenish, though they are moving in a march stance. Oh, look at that, a rogue army. Okay. I'm fighting everybody. We've gained a new sequence. 
When war is a constant state, losses are guaranteed, whether through attrition or casualties on the battlefield. This sequence helps Nakai to replenish their numbers for the next fight. Plus 2% to replenishment, plus 4 leadership whenever fighting against men. Man spawns sacrifice. You are not part of the great plan, so your meager life is forfeit. Alright, we have that pennant now. Nice. Hey, they came to me. They came to my neighborhood. We're going to pick up a Devastating Charge. If I can increase my Alpha Strike capabilities, oh man, they'll be in trouble. So we'll do that. Our Charge bonus goes over to our melee attack and our weapon damage too. That's why you're able to deal so much on that initial hit. One more point to put into Wind Blast. Let's make it cheap and easy to overcast if we want to. I don't always do it, but I do it sometimes. All right. Not possible. Not I think all of possible. you are in trouble. Let's go out and find them over here. Ooh, I do need to fight the battle again. If I don't, I'll lose way too many of my warriors. Okay, so let's do it again. Actually, an ambush would even help me. Then they would be closer to me. Those maps are usually pretty small, but oh well. So Wolfgang, you didn't die. Jorik, Grim, you didn't die either. I do feel bad for them. There's an army that advanced from over here. I would like to imagine they came in through some boats and... Now they've got a very hard trip back home. That Arch Lector is leading his men into a death trap. Our Proxagors are already inside their ranks. Our other warriors are currently beating them down. Where no one, not even a crossbows, will have much of a chance to get off any support of fire. They're alone here. And they're already running away. After that, we have another pocket of soldiers to put to the blade. We're getting closer and closer to picking up our blessed Stegadon as we bless Quetzal. It never gets old for me just watching those Croxagors make quick work of everyone. It's pretty good. They're pretty good. And so everyone's leaving. Now we just need to wait for the big fight that's going to be up that hill. That dwarf is going away. Oh, there's a little camp over here. I hate to show that, but I wonder who lit that on fire. It's a brazier of some sort. Just a random one just put there. Anyway, I always like to look at the scenery. I can't help it. Some of these maps are quite beautiful. It's a misty morning. And they're right up this hill. We just need to find them. Ah, here they are. Hidden away from us all. But now I can see them all clearly. There's their general. He probably knows he won't be able to flee, but this is where they stand, waiting for our army to move up the hill. Once we're up the hill, we'll fight a traditional battle. How many cannons do they have? Only two cannons left. Really? They're quite damaged, too. I wonder what's going to happen to that war wagon if it's hit by that cannon. It might be. Yeah, get whatever shots off that you want, great cannon. They're not really the most intelligent bunch. So, if we zoom out a little bit, we can see what's left of their little army. And my army's already moving up. That dwarf is still here, too. Right there. He's waiting. Now he's moving. At least moving a little. These two are lined up. There is a wind blast right behind them. My job right now is clear to destroy these war wagons. I do not want them harassing my army for too long. And all the while, my units are moving up. That great cannon, again, is just right on that hill, scoring a few blows to my soldiers, but that's one gone. There's only one more left. All those people jumped out and died. If you leave the great wagon, the war wagon, you die. Here comes that dwarf, taking cover behind one of these war wagons. You've got to imagine the fear that must be felt. He looks frantic and worried. The wave is coming. It can't be stopped. Black powder will not avail you today, humans. Technology will not do it for you. These are perfectly designed killing machines. 
and they're meeting every single unit they have here. Now we get to kill them all. They fought one battle. It was like fighting two battles total, though. There's more coming up the hill, too. Normally, I don't have such a campaign where we're having to fight so many different enemies all at once. Did you hit? You did. You hit Tippin. Oh, you're done for now, buddy. He's buffing up some units. And from behind, he's being hit by more warriors. There's only one war wagon. There's a Huntsman General fighting alone. We don't know where the Dwarf is at. It doesn't really matter, I suppose. If we zoom out, we can see how few they have. Though they fight bravely, unlike the Skaven, they do stand for a very long time. But now, the fight has been, well, closed up. It's over. We can kill that Dwarf, take the town, and move elsewhere. The Hunt Marshal had some advanced outposts out here with gunpowder and other tools of their trade but it's gone now we've won the battle and so that dwarf is going to die here all alone he's trying to get away but that's it for him we finally got the smelly little dwarf all right let's eat whatever we can we're a hungry bunch got to keep that uh you know weight gain up got to get those gains got to cultivate mass a stunted warm blood is known to be stealing from our kin, plundering our stockpiles of raw materials. His wanton pilfering hinders our ability to complete sequences central to the great plan. Lustria must be rid of him. Now I've gained 250 for the old one's favor, and I've gained a new blade to give to my champion. A sword of anti-heroes. This sword was said to be smelted in a cursed furnace and then quenched in the bloody body of a dying champion. My god, it's extra. Okay, we've unlocked a new right, a right of rebirth. For the Lizardmen, time of renaissance is now at hand, heralded by this powerful observance in the return of the Wanderer. I, like, choked in the middle of that word. <laughs> I should drink water. All right, rank seven, what are we looking at? Devastating charge. All right, 59 charge bonus, not bad at all. I can't reach their town. You get to live for one more turn. Lucky you. Lucky me, I get to heal up. Okay. I would like to save up my population growth a little bit more as I want another building. Or I could just get my Cold One Spear Riders that would allow me to ride down anyone and quickly too. I like that idea a lot. Or we can get a Salamander Hunting Pack or even over here a Razor Den Hunting Pack. Yeah, there's a lot that I can pick from. It's really difficult. Alright, so here's what I'll do then. I'll upgrade my capital. I'll be able to recruit more Croxigores if I want to. My campaign movement range will go up by 10%. Reactivate a ziggurat, huh? The Wanderer's followers have begun to power up the Old One's complex systems in preparation for their flight into destiny. Oh god, we're going to the stars, baby. Time to fight Cthulhu. Okay. I'm not going to activate you yet. I don't need to. Let's go over here and look at what we have. Ah, here we go. Blessed Cold One Spear Riders. Anti-large. All of that. Blessed Sars Spears are okay. Or I could wait for a Blessed Stegodon. What about a Saurian? There's a Carnosaur. I don't see a Saurian over here. Oh, fine. I'll have to wait then. Pity. More is to pity. Now, that Stegodon would be quite expensive, but it would allow me to bash right through their ranks. I could spend 300 or I can spend 500 We'll get 500 Oh, wait. I'm made out of money. <laughs> Funny how that works out. Okay. We'll combine what we have and potentially get rid of something. Well, no, I've got one turn to make more money right over here in the Chamber of Visions. Then we can go after more neighbors, even the High Elves over here. Or who knows, I'll let them live. I haven't decided yet. It really depends on where I'm going next. A blood sacrifice. Relations with a nearby settlement have deteriorated. Their interpretation of the Great Plan may be at odds with the Old One's intentions. Your slain mage priest informed you of a new ritual to recharge the geomantic web. I'm not going to kill them. I'll gain magic for a little bit, but no. Leave all of them alone. I've got a new mission to complete a new building. I mean, that'll just happen. The Rite of Awakening performed. All right. Time for me to win. That's one enemy dead. I've got a few more to kill. Now they're not down here anymore, posing a threat to our faction. Oh, we did lose a lot. Okay, gift for Quetzal. Fencer's Blades. 
Plus six to melee attack and melee defense is really high. And we've gained Butcher, a tier two trait. Slicing fingers to get at rings or heads to free bodies from prized armor. And this one is a butcher. Hey, hi, it's me. Hello. Okay, I'm not losing nearly as much gold now. I wanted to go after. I should go to the east. There's more Skaven to the east. I've already conquered so much. Look at how much I've taken over. I've run right through them. I mean, there's a lot up to the north. That's really where my main threat is at. But that's my main goal anyway. Okay, I need to conquer 40 locations. I can probably do that. Yeah, I'm going to need a lot more of Lustria in order to do it. Okay, let's go rush more Skaven. We're only on what? Turn 12? Only turn 12. For what I want to give you, that is going to be Reptilian Resilience, giving you more health. A low body temperature means that the Lizardmen can operate normally in environments which would overwhelm lesser races. Oops, I didn't mean to go there. <laughs> there we are. Oh, okay, I still clicked on it. Gotcha. And over here, we shall give you Blade Master. Oh, you can get a cold one? Really? Hold on. No, 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 no. Take that. Take that instead. I could wait for your Carnosaur, but... Oh, shoot. That's a tough one, isn't it? No, no. Take it now. You'll be able to cause fear. And I like that. I see her tipping. We'll put a point into Harmonic Convergence. I like that ability. I use it all the time. Hold on, we don't have your name. Your name is Shield Captain Nocto. I know your name. I know your story. You've been fighting with our dear Nakai for a very long time. Okay, now we need to move again, as I said, to the east. I'm only losing 189 per turn. I'm getting 600 per turn for gold. And I'm getting more and more favor. I do have a new quest issued. Golden Tributes. Have three of any of the following units. Okay, cohort of Waddle. And I only have one unit of those right now. The mighty Kroxagor Ancient, known among the Lizardmen as the Nakai the Wanderer, is encamped in the jungle when his skink attendants bring news of a disaster threatening the very beating heart of Lustria, that seemingly irrepressible, utterly insane vampire admiral, Luther Harkon, a Scooby-Doo villain, leader of the zombie pirates, has once again been pushing into the jungle interior with a large force of unliving freebooters, bolstered by a host of vicious Skaven mercenaries. If they are allowed to continue rampaging across the region, no temple city will be safe, or so the Wanderer Skank Scouts advise. To Nakai, the solution to the situation is clear. His horde must be bolstered at once if it is to deal with such a dangerous threat decisively and conclusively. Now I need to move any character to Albion. That might take a minute, okay? The all-knowing, seemingly ever-living Slan have revealed the location of several ancient structures and locations right across the World Pond, which prevent the forces of chaos from spilling out into our dimension and marauding across the old and new worlds. One such shard may now be under direct threat from the very faction it was designed to repel. If just a single one falls, the bonds which hold back chaos will be broken, and all hell will undoubtedly break loose. A situation as grave and as wide-reaching in its implications as this here must be investigated fully. In any event, defend the shard no matter what happens and what or and at whatever the cost. Alright. I'll recruit an agent to go out there much later. I can't really afford that right now. I could go up north to conquer what's left, but I'm heading to the east. I have a feeling the battles will become more difficult from here on out. Usually it's around this time period when Enemies begin to really grow their armies. I mean, we're strong. We're very strong, so we're not done yet. Let's combine what we have. There we are. Because I want to move closer to... Well, I wouldn't be really getting that much ground. All right. It'll take me a few turns, but we'll get to Chodol. Then, who knows? I might be limiting the growth of nearby allies, but eh. Teclis over here had the audacity and nerve to destroy one of our fellow Lizardman factions. And I found out he's trading with the Hunt's Marshal. I might not be a dwarf, but that's a grudgeon. Yeah, those rangers or that rogue army came over here to attack one of my vassal states and, well, they died. They died horribly. Now, Chodal, I'm here for you. Do you have lizard men or are you just a little ruin? Oh, you're a ruin. Okay. Well, we'll just take it. But again, there's no point in not trying to search the ruins. It used to be to where you could only do one, but now that I can actually gift it to my god after I'm done, it's really not too bad. Okay, 
Let me have a look at this puzzle real quick. Okay, I looked at it. The only symbol it's not repeating would be the one over here. Yeah, we've got the little angry dino. We've got some snakes over here. So there's only one left, that one. There we go. Wanchi's Blessed Totem. Hey, how about that? It's a small addition, but hey, it's free. And I've gained 1,000 gold, too. I'll give it to someone. Okay, Quetzal, enjoy your gift. I've gained another artifact hunter. Everyone needs one. My chance to get magical items will only go up because of it. Okay, let's go over here to our good buddy, Shield Captain Nocto. I'm going to give you that blade. Yeah. Take that blade for now. What about you? Do you need it? You don't really need a blade, but you'll take one anyway for that melee defense buff. Now, what we'll do, we'll wait here. We'll get Guacamole Crater, but then we'll move down to get the Mine of the Bearded Skulls. Because we're moving so quickly, a lot of these early game enemies are being crushed. We might even go around to fight the Tomb Kings. Oh, you have more. Okay, hold on. We'll have to keep on moving then. And there are more Skaven and Dark Elves to fight, so we have a lot of enemies left. We're not even close to conquering all of Lustria. We just have a nice portion of it under our control. But later, we'll come destroy some other enemies like, you know who, Turtle Boy. Kind of an awkward moment whenever you run into the one rat you don't want to run into at all. Lustria is quite large, and here he is right there, minding my own business, tiptoeing through the jungle. Now oh, I better kill you. What do you even have? Oh good, you don't have too many elites, you have what you largely begin with, but a lot of really bad rats. My rats are much more powerful. I mean, look at how weak these clan rats are. 20 melee attack, 31 melee defense, 23 weapon strength. He does have a play claw catapult, that does worry me a little bit. Oh, here we go, a right of rebirth. No, I'm not going to pick that up yet, no, no. But I will come over here. And we're going to pick up Blessed Stegadon. <laughs> oh, man. I'll have to get rid of a unit or two. But that's going to be fun for me. Okay. Let's have a look at another benefit that we have. Right. Quetzal's approval. We're now working on getting Quetzal's honor. It's an ability that would allow my units to be invulnerable for 12 seconds. I mean, if I get someone to charge in and they're charged at too, I could nullify that damage. That's really powerful. Now I have my Stegadon. Okay, let's have a look. Oh, you're not too bad. Come on in. We'll need a good name for you. All right. We're going to battle. Oh, okay. We're going to be on number two. Sounds good to me. Let's go. Here comes a Vermintide. A literal Vermintide. There's over 4,000 Skaven coming to fight us now. Lord Skrulk is here. A Plague Lord is here. They have every tool available to them to deal a lot of damage. Our warriors are waiting in the trees. They're advancing towards us. Hopefully many are tiring out. But you can see how many they have. It's going to be a tremendous battle. I believe that we can win, but let me tell you, it's been intimidating to fight against so many Skaven. Usually, I've got to be so very careful to avoid situations like this, but I don't see how I could have. There's no way to avoid them. I would have to leave. But we've got Nakai. We've got Kroxigors. The Great Plan is with us here. It's something to know that there is logic behind the decisions that a lizard might make. Cold and calculating. Just amped up a little bit. So here they come now. They do have a Plague Claw Catapult up on that hill, far, far away. That will deal a lot of damage, and it needs to be dealt with. Here they come. That's one spell, blowing right through many of my warriors. And here comes our Blessed Stegadon, charging straight into them. Skinks on its back, throwing down javelins, raining terror from above. And so it's going to be a long battle. It's a storied one. It certainly reminds me of any artistic rendering of battles against Skaven as the Lizardmen. And he hits another one. Though I didn't see any of them fly away. Okay. He just punched them. All of them. 
Now, let's get some better perspective. There is a Wind Blast killing a lot of Skaven. But again, let's just get a better point of view of what this battle even looks like. You can see how many there are, and already a lot of them have taken damage, extensive damage. They're fighting along a line. But if you're unable to really surround your target, what are you really doing? You're wasting your time. That's what I do in each battle. Usually I have such a balanced army, but again, I'm rather thankful I've been limited in what I'm able to recruit. It's worked out for me quite well. There he is. What an ugly rat. We're gonna burn that book later. Using more magic. More diseased, pestilent magic. Thanks to Tippin. Further out, you can see that those Skaven were broken pretty quickly, though we have another group that's going to hold off this entire contingent. While that is going on, we have our captain, our shield captain. He'll be advancing down here to destroy these Plague Claw catapults. These can deal so much damage if they're allowed to sustain the entire time. That's why they've got to go. And here they come, all of them. It'll be a long war to wage down here, but if we can win it, if we can destroy all the Skaven and Dark Elves in the Deep South, maybe we'll go fight the High Elves, belong into Teclis, and later we'll fight other targets who might be aiding the Great Enemy. And from a flank, we hit them harder. That Blessed Stegodon, I don't have to really worry about it, no matter how much damage it takes. It's darn sturdy. We don't have the tools to focus fire on it. There's another Wind Blast that just completely ravaged them. It's a great ability that I love to use. It's why I've been more focused on how I use my points for my heroes. I've been using my heroes so much more. Sometimes in campaigns, I use them on the campaign map quite a bit. Like, let's say we're playing Vampire Counts. I'll use a White King on the campaign map. They don't really have too many abilities that I'm a huge fan of. At least when it comes to an actual battle. They're a pretty standard character. Scar veterans are sturdy and very good, so I love to use them. For Lizardmen, I find their heroes to be quite good, so I tend to utilize them all in battle. Everyone has a place. I think it's because of the great mount that our Scar veterans can pick up, too, that I like to use them on the battlefield. You can see that they finally made it over here to the Play Claw Catapult. There's our captain. Fighting and gnashing and killing. That play claw catapult will no longer harry us. Over here is where a slower fire stick in place. You can see that we have got a few units that are being hit on two sides, thereby reducing their leadership. Though we have so much, I focused so much on trying to enhance the leadership of my units. I knew that I would need everyone to last. If they whittle down our numbers, we just need to fight. Now, what happened over here is that they surrounded Nakai. Nakai was actually losing this fight. These enemies were debuffing him, reducing how effective he is in combat. But there is aid coming. Nakai is not alone in the battle. Sacred Croxagores move in. I cannot wait to get another group. Eat that stone. It's a new sport called Rat Ball. You take ball, you hit rat with Rat Ball. It's a good sport. We're actually practicing for our international games. We'll play man ball later. We're undefeated, by the way. See, you think it's all about the great plan. It's the great stone ball plan, you see. So we zoom out and we look at what's left of the Skaven. Many of them are dead. We're just taking out what's left. Tippin is now moving, ready to take out even more Skaven over here who remain. There's only so many that are left. I wonder, do you have magic left for a Wind Blast? I don't believe you even need that. That Plane Claw Catapult was destroyed. So we don't need to worry about that. Our Saurus Warriors won the battle. My army is actually very easy to counter. It's just that, again, early on, they don't have any of the tools to counter it. I've been overly aggressive. And I've expanded quickly. It's my Lizard Krieg strategy. And it looks like we may have won the battle. There's only a few who are left. That Blessed Stegadon destroyed so many of them. I just had to leave him alone. He took some damage, a little bit. But that's it. 
battle's over. We've won. Now, we can go home. I'm kidding. We're not going home. Our home is wherever we go. It's usually to kill all these Skaven, like here. I like how they all threw javelins at that one particular Skaven. They were like, screw you, guy. You in particular, screw you. And now they're all fleeing. Good, good. There's no one who should be remaining, but somehow they're still going. They do score kills with those javelins. I wish you had spread it out a bit. Let's go now. We've got another location to take for the defenders of the Great Plan. We're losing 413 right now. I gained a potion of healing, but I did gain over 2,000 gold from winning that battle. Alright, time to kill and eat again. Oh, you're still very much alive. No wonder you had a big army. Again, if I had to fight you later on, I wouldn't be doing so well. Fan Waver, plus 5% casualty replenishment. My god. And over here, Plague Lash, making me immune to swamp attrition and providing of minus 5 to enemy public order. Oh, that's really powerful. And now I've gained a plus 3 leadership when fighting Skaven. The number one power in the world right now is actually the Hunts Marshal. It's pretty scary. Okay. I'm now going to give you a point into Curse of the Midnight Wind. You will be picking up no mounts at all. Not until... Well, I might give you the Pterodon. Stegodon, you're not really worthwhile. 27, yeah. I'll keep the Pterodon because I want you to be able to fly around quickly to be able to cast your spells. And for you, Shield Captain, Agility of the Lizard, no. Go Seeker, yeah, take that. Okay, Guacmole. Oof, that's a big one. Okay, let's fight one more and to take them over. It's going to be bloody. But thankfully, I killed off a large portion of their armies, and they only have one leader. Flagrog. He's pretty wounded. They'll have, like, warp bombs, probably. Oh, hello. Wall strength, only 72%. I like that. All right, let's go in. Now it's time for the Battle of Guacamole Crater. Instead of just having Nakai and his Croxagores, we have our blessed Stegodon as well. Plagrog, that warlord, is defending alone. He's not going to get very far with it. If he's got any magical aid, we'll get rid of them too. But the gates are now open, we get to move in. We already have a blessed Stegodon. And look at how early in the game it is. Now that's why we can just crash through anyone that we want. By the time we get to the Hunt's Marshal, things will become much more difficult. But for right now, let's enjoy how much overwhelming power that we have. It feels good. It feels good to just be able to overwhelm your enemies with pure strength of will. And strength of, you know, fist. Lots of that. We do a lot of fisting here. Lizard fisting is a way of life. And we're carrying it out. There's more magic to utilize because we have large units. Wind Blast doesn't really phase them too much. And so Tippin, like a long time ago when Tippin was in a game, he's killing many. Back then, though, he was killing hundreds more. Magic was a bit <laughs> much at that point in time. Now, Tippin is a type of seer who was used a long time ago when 2 just came out. A legendary skink, too, I might add. There's another Wind Blast rippling right through them. And as I normally do, we're hitting every portion of their walls. It's a tactic I often like to employ whenever I know that I have all the infantry. And they have just a bit of infantry. Because they can't stop me. They would need multiple units to be able to stop my attack. If I isolated myself to only one portion, they can't defend everywhere, but I can attack everywhere. It's very different. And so there's not too much that they can do. We just get to watch our Croxagores destroy all of them. So if we zoom out, we can see how much damage they've already taken. There's still a sizable force back at their, you know, town square. They would need a lot more spears to stop my Croxagores. But if you look at what they have here, they don't have a lot of spears. And what spears they have had have been Skaven Slaves. And Skaven Slaves just will not do it. Our damage output is way too high. That's why they're all drenched in gore. Not just blood, but gore. Viscera. Everything. Guts. 
there's the Blessed Stegadon, at least blocking any advance that they want to make, causing fear and terror. Very effective ways to keep them just so very scared. Skaven already have low leadership, so having all these tools to cause fear and terror gives me such an inherent advantage. They can't stay on the battlefield for a long period of time. Once they have Storm Vermin, then maybe they can do something, but they don't have it yet. Our Croxigors might take some damage today. Battle of Guacamole Crater is delicious and nutritious for all of us here. You can see what we're fighting for now and what we'll be breaking down. This is some pretty fancy ladders, I might add. Clan Pestilence, they're persistent. They're good at debuffing and prolonging a fight because of those said debuffs. There's my blessed Stegadon. Now in the middle of more of their units, Nakai has chosen this battlefield intentionally. Instead of waiting for them to become stronger, he's rushing everyone. He's not Nakai the wandering spirit, he's Nakai the sprinting, terrifying spirit. Unfortunately, what I had not noticed was our captain he got a little bit too zealous. And he's fighting all alone. And he's not doing well. To disengage is quite difficult. Right now, his health is okay, but that will not last forever. You can see me trying to move him out, though he's not moving out. Whenever you're on a mount, you can't get knocked down. So because of that, you're consistently taking damage, whereas when you're on foot, you can be knocked down. When you're trying to get back up and you're knocked down, you're invulnerable to more damage for a period of time. Here come some Saurus Warriors, but it will not be quick enough to surely aid him. He's just caught there. Look at that. Low health now. You can see our blessed Stegadon out there still fighting. And he's just trying to get through. I use Withdraw from time to time to make a unit forcefully flee, but they kept dragging him back in. It was not going well when it came to me trying to get him away, but thankfully, they were at the very brink already. The only reason why he survived is because these Skaven are about to break. That's it. There's a group here, but they don't have much more. They can't do much more. Now they're debuffed, giving him a chance to potentially move away. You can see those Croxagors getting into position slowly. We've got more Saurus units that are close by, but Guacamole Crater is now ours. It'll belong to our vassal. Those who are left will be expunged from existence. And we'll be able to further conquer the southern plains of Lustria. Maybe even destroying the Dark Elves. We'd love to go back after Teclas afterwards. We might go through, fight the Tomb Queen, who's over here, the Court of Libras. Then we'll go fight Teclas and destroy him for daring to trade with the Hunt Marshal. People who are invading and plundering our lands. There's more magic. I was trying to avoid hitting my units. We've got some disease-ridden filth who are debuffing my units, but it's not enough now. You can see that we're hitting them on three fronts now. The battle's over. We've won. We did it. We won that battle. I nearly lost my hero. I couldn't get him out. I always forget that sometimes whenever you're on a cold one, it can take a very long time to get away from a group of Skaven or anyone, really. All right, Quetzal. We're not done with you yet. One more enemy killed and another artifact hunter. I've got so many of those. No wonder I get so much magical stuff. One more level to go until I get Legendary Warrior. It is taking me a very long time to reach it. I have fought so many big battles, you'd think you would be like level 15 by now. <laughs> okay. We'll put a point over into Enforcer of Order. Plus 10% weapon strength whenever fighting Skaven. Yeah, I'll take that. I'll take that. Okay, Nakai, where am I going to bring you? We're going to leave you here for now. I don't need to recruit more. I could. I don't need to. More Croxicores would be terrifying as much as I want them. Okay. I could upgrade you. That would reduce my upkeep by a further 5%. You know what? I'm going to do that. It's only one population growth. So, yeah. We'll build it right now. And we'll gain more of a replenishment rate, too. Not bad. We've got Guacamole Crater. A cool location. Okay. 
So again, my goal is to go after the mine of the bearded skulls. We're nearly there too. We're nearly there. We're going to call it here for right now. We've got a new turn and a lot more to do that will continue whenever we're back. Do leave a like and comment right down below if you would like to see more tomorrow. And I would like to give a major shout out to all of my patrons. Thank you for your support and look forward to more.